behalf of the Cavalier Marching Band alumni, faculty, staff, and students, I want to welcome you and your family to our band family in the 19th season of the University of Virginia's Cavalier Marching Band. We welcome you and your students to one of the youngest and the most exciting band programs in the collegiate environment. My name is Dr. Elliot Tackett, and I'm the Director of Bands here at the University of Virginia. And I can tell you with confidence from the outset this evening that with our band program, there will be no hazing. There is no mistreatment of our students or violation of the student code of conduct of any kind. We have a zero tolerance policy, both in and out of the classroom. If a student chooses poorly, they will be referred to the Dean of Students for disciplinary action. We don't see that uh, hardly ever because we have wonderful students, but I did wanna mention that at the beginning of our meeting this evening. We do take the health and safety of your children, of your family members very seriously, and our goal is to provide them with the most enriching musical and social experience possible during their time on grounds. So, an introduction. Uh, I already introduced myself. Also on the call this evening is Dr. Drew Cook, who is the Associate Director of Bands, who is also um, on vacation in Michigan this week. We're very grateful that he's carved out some time for us this evening and is also running the slides. Um, not present this evening is Professor Michael Ibzior, um, Assistant Athletics Band Director, and also present on the call this evening is Professor Brandon West, our Assistant Band Director, who specializes in, among other things, uh, woodwinds and percussion. We also, uh, on our staff, have Mrs. Brittany Kellaway, not present on the call this evening. Brittany uh, twirled with the band uh, almost 10 years ago, and she's been a wonderful coach for our twirler program ever since, so we're grateful to have her on staff. Dr. Tom Pajewski is the Cavalier Marching Band photographer, and he is also a medical doctor in UVA's anesthesiology and neurological surgery department. In addition to the people that I just mentioned, we have a large creative staff of arrangers, drill writers, and choreographers who help craft our halftime show performances. These are absolute professionals in their fields who have written extensively for college marching bands and drum corps across the country. In addition to those folks, we also have a robust student leadership team of over 100 dedicated leaders who serve as section leaders, drill instructors, logistical crew members, and office assistants to help us provide an incredible experience to your students. So an introduction to college life. For some of you, this may be old hat. For some of you, it may be brand new. But we did want to mention some things that you can expect at the outset of the fall. First, academic rigor. Your students are attending a university that is ranked among the top 25 national universities ranked number four among, among public institutions of higher education in the United States. The academic side will be challenging. The musical side will be challenging. Your student will quite literally grow every single day. Social life. Your student is going to make new friends. They're going to expand their social network and their social skills. They're also going to potentially be living on their own or with a roommate for the first time. I also wanted to mention something that we hear a lot of, uh, from our students in our hallways, this, this notion of imposter syndrome. Your student will witness other students' successes in addition to their own. They may compare their perceived, their own personal perceived failures to the successes they see in others. So if they call you, if they're filled with self-doubt, remind them that the successes of others do not detract from their own success and their path towards success. College is a time where students are transitioning to adulthood. Your students will be making many of their own choices, managing their own schedules. They're hopefully going to be doing their own laundry and all of that takes coordination. All of that is part of the transition to adulthood and they will make mistakes. As parents or guardians, you should expect mistakes. You should expect phone calls, maybe expect small crises, our student leaders have been there and will be able to offer your students support and suggestions for path forward. We have been there ourselves as students at one point and can offer guidance. We can offer them guidance on, on um, how, how we might have gone through things um, and address what they may see as 
uh, a roadblock and offer them a way forward. Ultimately, these mistakes help college students grow into adulthood and are just as important as their many successes. So in other words, you can expect college to be challenging for your students, and we expect students to come across challenges in real time. It's a new community for them. The edge of failure is the beginning of growth. College life is about learning opportunities, and we're excited to be part of your students' college experience. So the high school experience is a little bit different than the college experience, underscored in part by the examples below. So some differences between high school and college band. Your students will be treated like adults in our band program, and we will hold them to a very high standard. We have behavioral and performance expectations of them both on and off the field. Your students will be respected and afforded the exact same dignity in communication as we would afford any of our own colleagues on ground. Your students will be supported by musician students just like themselves. In our band at UVA, dozens of valedictorians. In 2020, UVA had an admission rate of just 23%. Less than one out of every four applicants was admitted to the university. Your students all have earned the opportunity to study at the University of Virginia. So if they call and they tell you that they just can't, Hear them, but be supportive of them as well. In our band, in the past, we've had 70 plus drum majors from high school who are marching in the Cavalier Marching Band. The best of the best study at UVA. This means our band is full of dedicated leaders. In regard to college band versus high school band, you may uh, have been used to seeing uh, one to, to 6,000 uh, bands in attendance at high school football games. In Scott Stadium, we regularly have 30,000 plus people in attendance at games. Large games, such as Virginia Tech, when we host them, you can expect to see anywhere between 45 and 60,000 people in the stadium. There are over 30,000 people on grounds every single day between the undergraduate, graduate population, as well as administrators, faculty, and staff. Depending on the game, your student may be seen by anywhere between one and seven million people on TV or social media. The mental and physical demands that come with being part of such a successful and highly visible program are present, but we will be there every step of the way to support your student. I also wanna take just a moment to mention that once your child turns 18, we as faculty and staff are not legally allowed to discuss your child's participation, their enrollment status or grades in our classes without your students express written approval. So there may be times when you email us with a very specific question and you mention your child's name. We will always do our best to address your question. However, we must follow the law. So that it may seem at times that our responses will not directly address your child's particular situation or your exact question, and sometimes may seem overgeneralized in comparison to your question. This is us respecting your child's privacy, respecting the law, following the law. We thank you in advance for understanding. We do have some expectations of all students in the Cavalier Marching Band. First, professionalism. Our students, your children, act as ambassadors for themselves, our organization, and the university. We want to be sure that we are proud of the product that we put on the field and the people who are working in our rehearsals so diligently every single day. That comes by consistent professionalism. Compassion. At the same time, while we're working to be professional, we also want to support one another, lift one another up, and treat each other with respect. One of the cornerstones of our program is inclusivity. This means that we accept others based on how others define themselves. This means we see others and acknowledge their humanity and their identity. Hard work. Rehearsals are periods of time with high intensity and focus. It is probably no surprise to any of you that August band camp will be hot, that it will be humid, and it is taxing. But we are all in it together, and we will work hard to create a product that our students, our university, and our families are proud to be associated with. Next, integrity and trust. 
We'd like to believe that all others are there for the same reasons and that our students can support each other. So when your student enrolls in band and they come to practice, they deserve to believe that everyone around them is there for the exact same reason and will be there to support them. Members are expected to act with a high degree of integrity in order to build that most important trust has to exist among band members. And then finally, we expect that there's a commitment to each other. We strive to foster determination in our students for them to do their best. We'd like to see a willingness to dig deeper when they find a roadblock. We want them to respect each other through impeccable rehearsal technique and performance quality. So how do we do that? Well, there are some pillars of success. Now these are applicable musically, they're applicable academically, as well as personally. So we tried to boil these down to three word pillars. So the first is to bring your best. Someone's best evolves daily. Some days we can give 100%, some days we know that we're only gonna be able to give 80%. But we just ask that everyone bring their best to every single rehearsal. Performing with confidence. We all deserve to believe in our own abilities. Your students all deserve to believe in their ability, whether it's musically, academically, socially, personally. Others also deserve our support of their performance. Learning and leading. We ask that members first absorb what is being taught to apply it to themselves, both for their immediate success but also for future leadership opportunities. The leaders that will lead the Cavalier Marching Band in 2022 learned several years ago that which they're teaching starting during August Band Camp. Everyone is included. We will always strive to include as many members in our activities as possible. New in 2022, we are marching the entire band in the pregame show. Members have regular opportunities for their voices to be heard through our systems and operations committee that gathers anonymous student feedback and shares that both with leadership, directors, and the band writ large. We ask that students support their peers. As many of you know, college life is hard. So why waste a second of college tearing someone else down or holding someone else back? In band, others' success contributes to your success. Others' success contributes to your students' success. We focus on lifting each other up, celebrating their growth, and being helpful when it's asked of us. Bringing the hype. Band is quite simply a blast at the University of Virginia, and we quite literally set the tone on game day. Personally, I cannot wait for you as parents and guardians to hear Scott Stadium roar to life with the Cavalier Marching Band and your child taking the field for the pregame show. We set the tone, we invigorate the stadium, so why not bring the hype? And then finally, 1% better. Now we are all aware of the concept and value of compounding interest, where small changes result in small growth at first, but that small growth becomes the baseline. It's a reset at the beginning of each rehearsal. So this pillar isn't about measuring results, so much as it's about setting a cornerstone mindset. And over the course of a season, with the right mindset, we transform. As a Cavalier marching band parent, there are some things that you should expect. First, the coolness factor. Seeing your child perform in an ACC football stadium is a remarkable experience and one you deserve to be proud of. Quite literally, your child is in an ACC athletic band program. You get to show off your UVA band swag on game days. And I do want to mention that the band service fraternity, Kappa Kappa Psi, and our CNB Alumni Association will be at every single game day practice at Cars Hill Field if you are interested in purchasing some UVA band specific swag. You can expect some challenges as well. Expect a tired phone call. It might sound something like this please come get me. Um, that's normal. I would strongly suggest that you encourage your student, your child to stick it out. The first game will change everything. 
By the end of September 4th, the band will have given five performances in various settings on and off rounds. If your student is tired, they have given their all. If they are tired, they quite literally are doing it right. You can expect strong emotion on both sides, and this is normal. Expect anything from euphoria to despair when it comes to balancing personal, social, academic, and band life. Remind your student that they can do this. You may uh, also experience hearing some student stress. You may get a call when things are going great. You'll get a call when there's a personal crisis. Again, it's normal, but encourage them to do things for themselves. Encourage them to think critically about potential solutions on their own. Encourage them to build bridges with classmates, build bridges with bandmates, and empower their own belief in their self. Our sections are often larger than what members are used to in high school. For example, the piccolo and clarinet sections are each over 30 people. The trumpet and the drumline section are each over 40 people. And sometimes tensions rise between members. But if nothing else, remind your student to give it seven days, give it one week, and all will be well. You can also, as a CMB parent, expect many rewards. Among them, and I'll say it again, the game day pomp and circumstance surrounding your child entering the Scott Stadium and taking the field is absolutely invigorating. I think I can speak for my colleagues when I say we feel that as directors watching our students take the field every single home game. The CMB network of families and community members. Families make new family friends. Families support one another and each other's students. And there's also an ever-growing network, an active young network of CMB alums. We have a CMB alumni who are working currently as lawyers, architects, doctors, CEOs, development officers, nurses, quite literally, the list goes on. All of those people, all of those CMB alums are very willing to assist graduating CMB members with professional networking opportunities. And then finally, watching your student excel. Sitting in Scott Stadium or sitting in JPJ Arena or attending a Cavalier marching band rehearsal at Cars Hill Field and watching your student excel in a musical community that they enjoy being a part of. Just some of the many rewards associated with being a Cavalier marching band parent. So let's talk about the season just a little bit. Some very broad strokes. August band camp is a full week. It's six days. We have three a day rehearsals. We have a morning rehearsal, an afternoon rehearsal, and an evening rehearsal. We are doing so in the Virginia heat, in the Virginia humidity, and it will be glorious. Uh, they have the potential, your student has the potential to make as many as 250 new friends. On average during band camp, we will have 13 hour days. There is a band camp committee of students that is so, uh, focused solely on creating awesome end of day social experiences for your students. So I, I really do hope that at, at some point during band camp, you get a phone call from your student who says, rehearsals are exhausting. I'm having a blast. I've made a ton of friends. We have all of these fun things that we do at the end of the day. We have seven home games throughout the season. We are planning to travel in full to the Virginia Tech game, which means that we will have eight regular season games. And then of course, there's always the potential for post season play. As a reminder, all of our students should make a plan now to be available for the potential for a bowl game, which could happen on or around Christmas, as well as possible ACC championship appearances. Once we get into the weekly schedule during the season, during the semester, Every single week, we have a Tuesday and a Thursday evening rehearsal from 6 to 8, 15 p.m. There are very few exceptions to that statement. One exception is the Tuesday that is fall reading break. Another exception is the week leading up to Thanksgiving. So if you look at the week going into Thanksgiving, I think that's the week of like November 21st, November 22nd. We will not 
have rehearsal that Tuesday or that Thursday on Thanksgiving, we will have an extended rehearsal on Friday evening, the night prior to the trip to Virginia Tech. In addition, if we have a game on any given weekend, we add a Friday evening rehearsal from 6.30 to 8.45. Those are all open to friends and family members to attend. So please consider joining us on Card Hill Field. You're welcome to bring a lawn chair. You're welcome to bring a snack. In addition, when we have a game on a weekend, Color Guard adds one evening sectional, usually on Monday evening, and Drumline adds an evening sectional uh, traditionally held on Wednesday evening. Let's talk about the 2022 halftime shows for a moment. So the Cavalier Marching Band performs a new memorized halftime show at each home football game. A couple of things you may not be aware of about our shows. Over 15 students served on the halftime show design committee in spring of 2021. We had representation from almost every single section in the band in every single academic year. We met every other week and discussed potential themes, song selections that would go well with those themes. We polled the 2021 band to identify what the band wanted to perform the most. This year's fall halftime shows reflect our director-wide focus on student inclusion, and we're very proud of the student committee's efforts last spring to identify these themes. These halftime shows that I'll mention in a moment start with permissions to arrange music granted by a copyright holder. And of course, that is granted for a fee. Our halftime shows are then written by professional music arrangers, drum writers, and drill writers. Now, depending on the services provided for each show, it is normal for our halftime shows to cost anywhere between $7,000 to $10,000 a show. So if you or your company are ever interested in supporting in part or in whole one of our halftime shows, I would be very open to that conversation. So in no particular order, this fall, we are performing a video game show, a Welcome Coach Elliott show, a show that includes Broadway hits, a Billboard Charts Rewind, looking back at the hottest charts 10 and 20 years ago, We'll expect, excuse me, we'll express our appreciation for those who have served and who are currently veterans. We'll venture a bit into space and then we'll perform a Halloween themed show that we're calling Haunted Whoville. So as I had mentioned, this year we have right around a hundred student leaders who are serving in a variety of positions. In the future, moving beyond uh, learning to leading, I wanted to mention some future opportunities for your child to stay involved, but also to be involved in our leadership program. So we have a variety of leadership positions. These include section leaders. Those are the students who assist not only with preparing the section musically, but also serve as a more of a holistic voice for the health and wellness of the section in general. We have drill instructors who, among other things, um, make sure that the Physical motions on the field, the visuals have been coordinated and designed to complement the music and complement the drill. Our drill instructors also make up visuals for use in the stands. We have students who work on equipment crews. We have a robust uniform crew because as you can as you can imagine, when we have 250 uniforms uh, collected at the end of the game and we have to get those cleaned, we have to have help to put those uniform bags back together to make sure your, your child is wearing the correct jacket and the correct pair of pants. We have students who serve on the band banquet committee. So at the end of the year, there are four to six students who will create a wonderful reflective event full of audio, full of video, full of stories. There are gifts for the students. So if your student would be interested basically in an awesome party planning opportunity, band banquet would be, would be perfect for them. We have students who serve on the color guard in drumline equipment crews. We also have students who help with help out with game day assistance. Now, as you know, student governance is an integral part of the UVA experience. So because of that, and because we focus on having a student included program, we have student committees. 
We have, as I mentioned before, the halftime show design committee that we'll meet in the spring. The question always is, if money were no object, what show would you want to perform? We have a systems and operations student committee. These students are given a direct line of communication to, uh, sorry, students are given a direct line of communication to provide feedback on everything from snack nutrition to rehearsal, rehearsal efficiency to the health and culture of our band family. We have a communications and media committee. It's all about celebrating your students, amplifying their success, amplifying what they are doing and making that available to the public to see. Your students are among the best and the brightest in the country. We want to amplify their achievements and their experiences both on and off the field. If you're following us on social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, or you've joined the MailChimp Students Newsletter, you can thank the Communications and Media Committee for their diligent work to make sure that all of that material is accessible to you. We also have a, co a committee focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, taking a constant and thorough look at improving the health and the safety of our band culture for all. And this committee works toward improving respect of and inclusivity of all. We also have employment opportunities available through the band office. We do employ a small staff of office workers throughout the year who are tasked with various assignments based on the band program's needs. And then finally, how you can get involved. First, come by our game day Saturday rehearsals. Say hello, support the students. At the end of rehearsal, please come down to the field, put your arms around each other and sing the good old song with us. It gives, also gives us uh, time for you to interface with other families, for you to interface with your students. As I'm sure you know, game days are about a 10 to 12 hour day for our students, but this is time set aside for you to enjoy connecting, reconnecting with your students over the weekend. Actively engage with us on social media. Spread the good word to friends and family about your child's positive experiences in the CNB. If we travel to a bowl game, if we're bowl eligible, if we've won more than six games, meet us at the bowl sites. We would love to see you. And then finally, Giving, I welcome any conversation to hear about your own passions to support our incredible students. And there's a link on the slide for you uh, currently, as well as in the slide deck that I sent in the email earlier today, if you are interested. Um, you can also visit the Cavalier Marching Band website. There is a button in the top right corner, uh, uh, orange button that says give. Uh, you can always email bands at virginia.edu if you have any questions about giving. We were very, very grateful to have the support expressed last year that we did. Over 200 people gave either one-time donations or recurring donations. As I'm sure that you're aware, um, marching band is very similar to opera. It takes a lot of money to provide a great experience to students. Every dollar counts. So if you feel that you can give $10, we're grateful. If you can give more, we're grateful. So at this point, I do also want to go over this slide here to just cover early movement. So some of you may have students who need to move into their on-ground living assignment on Monday, August 15th. Others of you on the call may have students who are living off-grounds, potentially in an apartment or a, or a house, and this may not directly apply to you. But if it does, the first day of band camp is also early move-in day. So early move-in begins at 8 a.m at your student's dorm. While they are going through the move-in process, they will also receive their student ID card. They will use their student ID card to swipe in for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Newcomb to access their dorm as well. Band camp check-in begins at the Hunter Smith Band Building from 8.30 to 11.45. Uh, the address for the band building is 180 Culberth Road. There is a parking garage very, very close to the Hunter Smith Band Building. It's called the Culbert Garage. There will be free parking available the entire week of band camp, not only for you as you're dropping off your students, but also for your students if they have a car on the grounds. For students living off grounds, band camp check-in still begins at 8.30 at the Hunter Smith Band Building. We suggest 
that, uh, that you suggest to your student to come early. Don't sleep in and arrive last minute. As soon as we get to 1145, we shut down, everybody goes to lunch. We have a parent meeting at the band building from 1215 to one, it's an optional in-person meeting. So while students are at lunch and they're meeting each other and they're starting to network and make friends, we will have a chance to speak with you directly to meet you in person. And then once the students come back at 1.30, the goal is to have as few people as possible still needing to go through check, check in. So they will meet 1.30 to two, they'll have a chance to do intersection bonding. And then at two o'clock on August 15th, we start a full hour welcome meeting and go straight into bed. So at this point, I'd like to open the meeting up. I see that there are uh, some questions in the chat. Thank you so much for dropping those in here. If you have questions, please feel free to stick around. Uh, we will do our best to, to answer those as quickly as we can, whether it's in chat or verbally. If you don't have questions and you need to sign off, I wanna thank you again all for being here. Uh, we really appreciate your investment of time, especially at the end of a long day. We look forward to meeting your students in person. We look forward to working with your students in person in just a few days. Danielle W. asked, for parents that can't get to games, is it possible for CMB to videotape the halftime shows? The short answer is yes. Danielle, there's a challenge for us. Anytime that we want to put something out into the public space, such as, through the CMB's YouTube channel, we have to pay for rights to literally post that video to YouTube. And right now, the cost of those rights are not in our budget. We do plan to videotape for educational purposes, the halftime shows for the students to watch for areas of, of growth and improvement, but we don't plan to make those public at this time. Kimberly Glenn asked, do Entering first year students get a separate email or notification from housing with their early move in information for 815. Yes, they should have received those either already or very recently, uh, as, as recently as yesterday, I submitted about 15 more names um, to UVA housing for early housing. I do want to mention one thing UVA housing system for first year students has been pulling their orientation date, which is usually in July, and putting that into their early move-in information. So if, if your student has received an email saying you're approved for early move-in and you can move in July 14, obviously there's a little bit of concern there. Um, if they're receiving an email from UVA Housing saying they're approved for early move-in, UVA Housing is aware that they will be moving in on August 15th. Is the Virginia Tech game mandatory? We already have plane tickets, not knowing the band was going. Is the band performing or just in the stand? Well, we are performing in the stands. The game is mandatory, but I also understand uh, that there are plane tickets purchased already. We certainly don't want to create hardship. Julie, your students should talk to us uh, directly about that. Uh, Kim, Kimberly Glenn asked, what time is the extended practice on Friday, um, November 25th? I want to say it starts at five and ends at eight, and we're also feeding the students at that point as well. Teresa Trissel asked, how many new members are you expecting this year? Last I checked, I think we had 81 brand new members. That includes first, um, first year academically, second through fourth year academically as well. But new CMB members were looking at uh, just around 80. Greg asked about the Thanksgiving week schedule. Again, this is broad strokes and it's subject to change. Tuesday, Thursday will be off, uh, that Thursday being Thanksgiving. Friday, students will need to be back for, a, I believe it's a 5 p.m. rehearsal, which concludes at eight. There's a meal in there where we'll feed them. Um, I don't even wanna get into the Saturday schedule. It's going to be a 16 to 18 hour day when we, when we trip down to Virginia Tech. Will students be excused from mandatory dorm meetings while they are attending band camp? Uh, Rich Ruse asked that question. I would need your student to reach out to me and give me more specific information. Um, oftentimes those meetings um, can be uh, reduced to about 50, a 15 minute meeting or a short email. 
I would prefer that they are available for Bandcamp, especially because we have so little time to get things going. Beth Jones, do marchers march every show? Answer is yes. Every student is in the pregame show. Every student is in a halftime show. Max Linz asks, can students borrow or rent instruments for the season? We are in a very fortunate position um, in UVA bands to be able to provide at no cost to a student any instrument that they perform with on the field, or if they are in a concert ensemble, we are able to provide them with instruments. So we have everything from 30 thumb sousaphones to several bassoons and oboes. Uh, so your students do not rent from us, they borrow, they fill out an, uh, a, uh, a borrowing contract, we loan them an instrument. And so long as it is returned to us with just normal wear and tear, there's no charge to the student. GC asked, is it possible to move in personal belongings early, such as the evening of August 14th? I advocated for that, and the answer was no, unfortunately. The absolute earliest that we can get you, your students, and their belongings in is August 15th. Uh, I wish that we had a better option for you. A iPad asked for the Virginia Tech game, when does the student have to arrive back at campus? We have out-of-state plans for Thanksgiving. 4.59 p.m. on Friday, uh, the day after Thanksgiving. Are there any required band fees or costs? There aren't required band fees and costs. Um, if there's significant damage to an instrument, that would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we do expect that students provide their own shoes to march in. Um, Likely your student has received this information from one of their section leaders already, um, but as of 2021, students are allowed to march in any black shoe that they provide. It could be a, it could be a dress shoe wingtip, it could be a Nike running shoe. The, it's required that the shoe is completely black, including the, the sole around the bottom. Um, but so long as it's completely black, because our students march in fat, and because the color guard has such active choreography, the brand of the shoe does not matter. Can you repeat what the new changes are this year regarding all students marching on the field? Ah, good question. Danielle asks, can you repeat what the new changes are this year regarding all the students marching on the field? Does this include the front ensemble? Um, in the pregame show, we do not have front ensemble. So all of the students who would play mallets in the front ensemble actually march on the cymbal line. Now students do have the option to opt out of that. We, we have a couple of students who aren't comfortable playing cymbal, that's fine. Um, but it's the student's choice to opt out. But if we have a band of 255, we will have 255 spaces for people to march in the pregame show. During the halftime show, all members are written into the drill. So if we have a 255 person band, we'll have 255 uh, positions for performance with the exception of the front ensemble. The front ensemble only performs when we perform to the home sideline. Um, when we turn around and perform to the away sideline, students in the front ensemble who wish to march will put their mallets down, pick up a pair of cymbals, and we write them into the drill. Nancy S. asked, what's the band camp hours? I ordered bedding that will ship to her dorm on 815. Does she have time during the day to get the order? Um, I can't answer that specifically, Nancy. What I can tell you is that band camp hours in general will be around 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. The students have opportunities to socialize together through uh, student-led social activities. Um, not sure who she is, but it would be an option for her on a lunch break or a dinner break to run back to her dorm on the 15th. It's also very likely that anything that is shipped to the dorm will be held by RAs or staff on her behalf. Are water and snacks provided during marching band camp? Water, absolutely. Snacks, absolutely. We will also try during the middle of the day to get your, your child indoors as much as possible. 
uh, especially in the afternoon. So that 1.30 to 4.30 block or that 1 to 4.30 block, we have uh, sectional spaces in various buildings around arts grounds. That's going to be in the drama building, the Hunter Smith Band building, um, the architecture building, as well as roof and hall, um, literally to get your students out of the heat, out of the humidity, out of the UV. We will spend a little bit of time outdoors in the hottest part of the day um, having some rehearsals because it's also important that we build a physical understanding of what we are up against when we go to Scott Stadium. So the first game is at 1230 on September 4th. The game will conclude around 330. As you know, most days heat peaks around four. So we have to make sure that students are comfortably uncomfortable with physically with, with the demands of the marching band. All good questions. Other questions? Well, maybe while we're waiting for a couple more questions, um, Dr. Cook, if I could put you on the spot to just give us maybe like a 60 second biographical sketch of your background for everybody who's here. Sure, yeah. Um, I went to Western Michigan University and taught middle school and public school down in South Carolina. Uh, and I got here in 2005. So um, I've gotten to see the band evolve over a great amount of time. And uh, it's been quite exciting to see all the changes and, and things in store that we've got ahead. I do want to mention that um, with with Dr. Cook mentioning that he, he got the UVA in 2005. Um, Dr. Cook and Professor Idzior were instrumental in guiding the band program through um, basically no contact, no in-person band uh, experiences for over a year. And I remain very uh, proud of my colleagues, but also very grateful for the many hours that they put into recording projects and um, that kind of leadership, you know, pioneering new opportunities in the face of a pandemic. Um, Brandon and I are very fortunate to have Mike and Drew as colleagues. So, Drew, thank you. Thank you. Brandon, if you are on, would you mind giving us a 60 second biological sketch as well? Yes. So, uh, I'm Brandon West. I am originally from the Southeast area of North Carolina. Uh, I did my undergraduate at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. I did my master's in percussion at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Uh, I have been in Virginia for a total of five months <laughs> and uh, I've loved it. I've loved it a lot. I've had a lot of fun here. Uh, we got to work very quickly and I primarily do teach the drum line here, which has been really exciting. Uh, we're finishing up our auditions now. It's been a really great time. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I love working with my colleagues and uh, I'm very excited to see um, the marching band this fall at Scott Stadium. So we were very fortunate to be able to hire uh, Brandon basically end of January, if that sounds right. And I, I think the very first week um, he was moving equipment, driving trucks, going to basketball games. He was rehearsing the drum line weekly. Uh, we've been very fortunate to be able to add him to the staff. Uh, there's a couple more questions here that have come in. Um, will there be tickets available to band parents for the Virginia Tech game? Uh, Greg asked that question. We won't be able to provide tickets through the band area, although I would suggest if you're interested in attending that game to look on the Virginia Tech Athletic website and try to purchase tickets directly through uh, Virginia Tech. Another option is to see if UVA Athletics is offering a ticket block through which you could purchase a few tickets. Jennifer Hazard asked a great question. Are there any plans to feed the students between Cars Hill practice and game time on home games? The answer is yes. The location currently is unknown. It's gonna be in one of two places. Um, we had a meeting with the student leadership, I wanna say it was last week or, or the week before. And I presented to the student leaders three potential game day schedule plan. Um, the decision on which plan we will execute is not up to us. It's based on whether or not um, 
the Cavalier Marching Band will be able to perform at the Wahoo Walk on game days. If the Cavalier Marching, to answer your question, Jennifer, if the Cavalier Marching Band is able to perform at the Wahoo Walk full strength, so the full band, we will finish rehearsal on Cars Hill Field. There will be, a, I think it's 45 minutes to an hour for family members to, to mingle and say hi to their, to their students. Um, and then we will very quickly transport the whole band by bus to the Aquatic Fitness Center. They'll perform at the Wahoo Walk. And then after they come back, that's when they'll eat. They would eat at the AFC. If the Cavalier Marching Band is not able to perform in full at the Wahoo Walk, then if you're familiar with our 2021 game day schedule, it will look very similar this, this year, which is to say, we'll finish the rehearsal at Carso Field. There will be almost two hours for family members to mingle for the students to eat um, at the Hunter Smith Band Building and change into uniform. Then we bust them down to the stadium uh, <clears throat> pregame. Uh, so we, we just don't have an answer yet. But yes, uh, we do plan to feed students between the practice and game time. What kind of game day help are we looking for from parents? First of all, it's only if you're really feeling like helping out, because we want you to be able to enjoy the game from the stand. But if you really enjoyed helping out when your student was in high school and you have a game or two where maybe you couldn't get tickets or um, it's just kind of a surprise that you're available and you want to help out, um, Beth, we would be more than happy to go over this, the particulars, uh, but broad strokes, there's setting up and tearing down food for that, that meal I just mentioned might be at the band building, might be the aquatic fitness center. There's always truck loading and unloading. There's always assistance that we would appreciate in the stands. As you know, it's hot You know, in the stands, we're in the sun. We have, uh, I actually just ordered 5,000 water cups to get us started for the season. Um, those water cups need filling as quickly as they're emptied by the students. There's a whole bunch of opportunities where you can help us out. Now, I'll mention this. Um, if, you're, if you plan to volunteer and to help as a parent, one of the things that we have to do is have a credential made on your behalf. So what I would need is an email from you um, and the, the headshot that you're most proud of to have on the credential. Uh, we have to submit those. But thank you for your question, Beth. I appreciate it. Mona's iPad asks, if you are a Virginia football season ticket holder, you will be offered, oh, perfect. You'll be offered tickets to other venues, including Virginia Tech. I purchased my tickets for this past week for the Virginia Tech game. Mona, thank you for offering that. I learned something every day. Danielle W. asked, it seems that sections primarily socialize themselves. Is there a way to expand so there is more cross-section socialization? I love this question. Um, the Bandcamp Social Committee is literally asking that question right now. What kinds of activities during band camp can we do that sets up season-long intersection socialization? Um, are there any ticket discounts for marching band parents? Asked by GC. If you are interested in purchasing season tickets, so a ticket for every single game, the answer is yes. There is a, uh, a discount code. I believe it was attached to the email that I had sent out this, this afternoon. Uh, it's a 20% discount for CMB parents, and we're very fortunate that uh, the Virginia Athletic Foundation allows for that discount to exist without a required gift to the VAF. Thank you for that question, GC. Other questions? Well, maybe I'll just ask you all uh, to jump on the chat real quick and just share with us uh, something that you're excited about or something you're excited about for your, your students this fall. We would love to see that. Dancing tubas, yes. COVID restrictions currently are gone. Julie, great question. Uh, I suppose there's always the possibility that they would, they would return. Um, but right now, we plan to operate as we did at the end of last spring. No masks, 
no bell covers, no social distancing. Uh, rehearsals with winds are allowable indoors. I agree with you, Danielle. It is a great way for students to meet other students. I'll also mention, um, I almost forgot, um, Bandcamp is going to be so much fun for them. On Thursday, August 18th, we are taking the whole marching band to the Farmington Country Club. They will perform for about 45 minutes. It unfortunately is a closed rehearsal, um, but we'll have a chance to perform for many people who are in attendance at the club. The club then turns around and feeds a full meal to our students, so the whole band. And then as soon as that's done, we're taking the students who want to go, uh, we're putting them on buses, and we're going to Charlottesville Bolero. So we've reserved 30 bowling lanes for the Cavalier Marching Band. Um, so quite literally, the lanes hold up to eight people. It's possible that the whole band will go. Now, if you know for a fact, like my child has zero interest in, in bowling, there is an option for them to, to go back to grounds. Um, so no one is forced to go to the bowling alley, but that is something that will provide a lot of opportunity for people who aren't in the same section to socialize and bowl. And I think the directors are going that night too. So if you have a student that is a great bowler, um, pair them with me because I am terrible. Excited for something back to the band. Wonderful, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, that's normal, that's a great point. Thank you. Some parents buy season tickets and have games that they can't attend. So they sell them on the, the band page. I assume that that's the CMB Family Network Facebook page. Yes, Julie brought up a great point. Looking forward to attending her first Paint the Town Orange. Paint the Town Orange uh, annually is the Friday before the first game. So you are looking at, um, check me on this, so sorry. I believe it's September 2nd, Friday, September 2nd in uh, the Charlottesville downtown mall. Drew, do I have that right? Is it the second or the third? Second? Okay. Um, we will start marching through the Charlottesville mall at 8 p.m. We'll arrive at the Ting Pavilion right around 8.30. We literally march right in uh, to the Ting Pavilion. We'll build a little um, exhibition set, and then we'll perform uh, for all who are in attendance until UVA football, likely the coach, comes out and speaks. Great point, Maria. Thank you. Recommendation for new parents, book hotels for parents weekend now. It's a great question, Danielle. For low-income families, will they be able to get reduced or free tickets for individual games? It's a great question. I'm so glad you asked. Um, we... Uh, the, the University of Virginia Cavalier Marching Band buys a block of season tickets. So we have, I think it's 10, no, we have 12 tickets for every single game. And students uh, on a first come first serve basis can request up to four free tickets throughout the course of the season. Now, as I, as I said, it's first come first serve. Um, so if you, if you or someone you know has a, a, a family member who wants to attend a game who can't afford a game, they'll be able to request a free ticket through, through our office um, for a game of their choosing. Great point, Lisa, thank you. Uh, Nancy asked how to join the CMB Facebook to keep updated. I'm going to drop our at handle in the chat. Um, all, across all of our social media platforms, we have the exact same handle, at UVA Marching Band. It works for Instagram. It works for Snapchat. It works for TikTok, if you're into that. It works for Facebook. Uh, we also have that on Twitter as well. Um, admittedly, our Twitter has been kept a little quiet uh, over last year. We will see if we can invigorate our Twitter to be a little bit more helpful. I would also suggest checking the Cavalier Marching Band website uh, specifically to look at the calendar. We'll oftentimes have um, information up there for when the band is practicing. I would honestly suggest just following us on Instagram since um, the Social Media and Communications Committee did a wonderful job last year of putting out the game day schedule for the band. Literally, we'll be here at this location, at this time, for this duration. 
Christy Snow said, I love the awesome shirts that are available to buy at the open rehearsals before the home game. Thank you, love these. I'm so glad to hear that. We we do have um, new sweat catchers that are blue. They'll say uh, V-Band. So when you saw the slides this evening, in the bottom right corner, you saw the, the split V, it said band in the middle. That will be on every single student's sweat catcher, every single student's pair of shorts, hats, fanny packs, and through Kappa Kappa Psi, I believe, uh, those will be av available for purchase as well. Um, while many of you are still here, I did want to mention that at the end of band camp, um, and this is in the email that I had sent as well, we will have a friends and family exhibition performance at Cars Hill Field on Saturday, August 20th, starting at 1 p.m. After that performance concludes, we are offering uh, a barbecue for all of our students, but also friends and family members who attended the exhibition performance. Um, during that time, we are actually going to place out for free um, a lot of the apparel from previous years that we just don't have complete sets of at this point. So we might have 54 pair of, of shorts in medium um, from a couple of years ago. Those are going to be available gratis. So anyone who wants to grab some extra swag, you are more than welcome to do so. It costs nothing. If you really want to give a donation, you're welcome to, but we just want to make this available to you all um, to just make sure that there's enough orange and blue to go around. Danielle, thanks so much for your comment. We appreciate the positivity. Yes, Julia has a good point. All the sections have their own Instagram accounts you can follow as well. If you're looking for where to find that information, go to at UVA Marching Men on Instagram. In the profile, there's a link tree. You can click on that link. And among other things, there will be a link to every single section Instagram account. Thank you, Annette. Appreciate that. Uh, Greg, great question. Are there ways for parents to buy UVA band swag for family who may not be on campus? There's a couple of different ways. If you have one person uh, on grounds, likely uh, your student, your child, they could purchase it in person and then and then mail it. Another option would be, uh, Greg, if you email one of us or you just email bands at virginia.edu, I'll drop that in here in the chat. Um, if you ever email bands at virginia.edu, it goes to all four band directors. Um, and we could connect you with Kappa Kappa Psi, who is principally um, selling that UVA band garb. As you can imagine, we actually aren't allowed to sell um, the shirts that we provide to students, so we give everything away for free. But Kappa Kappa Psi, our band fraternity, is able to sell um, those shirts, those, those sweatshirts in the fall. So if you're interested, um, please feel free to, to email us, and we can try to connect you with the the students to take care of that purchase. All right. It is 731. If you have no other questions, you are welcome to log off, of course. Thank you again so much for being here. We really appreciate it. If you have other questions, we're going to close down in about two minutes. You're always welcome to email us. We're happy to, to respond as quickly as possible. Wishing you all the, um, the best for the rest of your week. So looking forward to seeing your students in just a few days. Don't forget to have them pack sunscreen. We're expecting and hoping for lots of sun and very little rain. <laughs>